Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 1 to 4 of ASP.NET video tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about caching multiple versions of a user control using vary by control attribute of the output cache directive. In part 122 of the ASP.NET video tutorial, we discussed about fragment caching. If you haven't watched that video, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. In this session, we'll be using the same TBL products table that we have used in part 122 of the ASP.NET video tutorial. If you need the script to create and populate this table, then please refer to part 122. So on my blog at the uh, URL here, you can actually find that script on fragment caching in ASP.NET part 122. So here you have a script to create the table and populate it with some sample data. Now let's go ahead and create a stored procedure to retrieve products from this table by product name. So I have the stored procedure here, sp get product by product na by name, and this procedure takes one input parameter at name. So obviously uh, by this name we are going to filter and retrieve products from TBL products table. So if you look at the implementation of the stored procedure, this is straightforward. If the product name is all, then we don't have a where clause. You know, we select ID, name, and description from TBL products. On the other hand, if it is not all, then we are using that product name to filter the rows based on the name column. Okay, select ID, name, description from TBL products where name is equal to add product name, whatever we pass again to the stored procedure. Now let's quickly test the stored procedure. So obviously, if I pass in all for the product name parameter and execute this, I get all the products. On the other hand, if I just want, you know, iPhones, then I pass iPhone as the product name. I only get that product. All right. Now let us flip to Visual Studio. And then what I basically want to do is I want to create a user control. So to this web application project, let's go ahead and add a product user control, uc product control .acx. I have already added this to the web application project. And at the moment, if you look at this, we have the control declaration itself and then a table with one pixel solid black border. Okay, so let's see what is the design that we need to have here. I have already typed that just to save some time in typing. So let me go ahead and copy the HTML for the user control and then we'll go through it line by line. So this is a pretty straightforward HTML. Let me format that properly. Okay, so if you look at the HTML here, this in this table we have a TR here uh, which just sets the heading for the user control, product user control. Let me show you the design. So this is how it looks like. That's the heading with a gray background product user control and then we have the static text select product with a drop down list okay and if you look at that one that the yeah, look at that we have, that's the static text and then the drop down list control and this drop down list control has several list items all the products that are basically within the uh, table within the stable products table whatever products we have we have them in the drop down list as well the names just their names Okay, along with those products, I have an additional list item here which says all. And the important thing to notice here is that the text and value are both names. Okay, and another important thing to notice here is auto postback property is set to true, which means whenever a selection in the drop down list changes, uh, the, it's going to be posted back to the web server immediately. So that's the second tier. And then we have a grid view control. Obviously, whatever product that I select within the drop down list, I want to show that product within the grid view control. So, to display those products, we have this grid view control. And then user control server time and user control client time. So, to print the client time, we have this JavaScript code. We have discussed about this in the previous sessions of this video series. So we are using the date JavaScript function to retrieve the client side date and time. And we are printing that using the write function of the document object. Okay. So since that is a JavaScript, it's enclosed within the script tag. And that's the client time. And we are going to print the server time in this label control. So we will compute that in the code behind file in just a bit. And obviously, that's the grid view control. So that's the design of the uh, user control. So let's, you know, specify the code in the code behind file. So what we need to do in the code behind file, again, I have this coded app. So let me go ahead and copy and paste that. And then we'll go through it in a bit. 
So that's the piece of code. Again, this is pretty straightforward code there. So if you look at this one, in the page load, what we are doing, um, you know, if it's not a post back in the sense if it's the initial get request, we are getting product by name. And what I'm going to do here, instead of saying all, instead of hard coding the value of all, I'm going to say drop down list one dot selected value. So whatever value that we have selected in the drop down list, okay, so pass that value to this method get product by name. So what is this method doing? If you look at this, it's a private method. And this method has got some simple ADO.NET code. So if you look at this method, all it does is it makes a connection to the database and then executes the stored procedure, SP get product by name. Okay, and that's the stored procedure which we have just seen. Okay, so whatever whatever we product that we select within the drop down list, that name is passed into this method and this method will pass that name to the stored procedure SP get product by name, execute the stored procedure, retrieve the results and display that within the grid view control. So this is simple ADO.NET code. I'm not going to go through this ADO.NET code because we discussed about ADO.NET code in a great detail in ADO.NET video tutorial. Please refer to that videos. Okay, so that is this method. So, so we are calling this method in the initial get request. If it's not a post back, then call that method pass in whatever you selected in the drop down list initially when the page renders all will be selected in the drop down list because that's the first item within the drop down list so if you look at this that's the first item so that will be all will be selected which will be passed to this method and this method will retrieve all products and then display them in the grid view control and the other thing is label one dot text which is nothing but this label control which is going to display the server side date and time so we are basically setting the text to datetime.now.toString. And then we have set the auto postback property of this drop down list control to true. So I want basically, let's get rid of that there. So whenever the selection in the drop down list changes, we want to post back to the server. So if you look at this, we want to post back to the server. And what we are basically doing is whatever the user, whatever the value that the user has selected in the drop down list, we are passing that selected value to get product by name function. And what is that function doing? It's going to pass that name to that stored procedure, execute that, retrieve the results, and display the results in the grid view control. Okay. So, simple, you know, all we are doing on this page is basically within the initial page load. We are calling this get product by name. We display all the products, but whenever we change the selection in the drop down list, this method gets executed and we will only show the selected product in the grid view control. All right. Now we want to use this user control on this web form 1.aspx. Okay. Now here I already have a register directive for the user control. Because if I want to use that user control on this web form, I need to register that user control either on the web form or in web.config file. Okay, so it is that register directive. If you're new to user controls, I would strongly recommend to watch the video tutorials on user controls that we have discussed about in the previous sessions of this video series. Okay, so let's look at the HTML that we need on this web form itself. So again, I have this here. Let me copy and paste this. Let me format this properly. Okay, so if you look at this again, I have this table, and within the table, there's one TR. So if you look at the design, you know, it's pretty much straightforward. This is the user control itself. So if you go to the source, that's the user control in one of the TRs. And then above the user control, I have another three TRs. Okay, so if you look at the three TRs that I have here, so here I have a heading which says page content that changes. So maybe on this web form I have some page content which dynamically, uh, which changes every time I refresh the web form, maybe company events, company news, etc. And then I have this page server time, okay, a static text, and then a label control to print the server side date and time. And then obviously a a text here, static text, stating page client time. 
and if you look at the client time we are printing the client time again using the JavaScript so we are printing the server time and client time on the web form as well as on the user control okay all right so now we have all set up but remember either on the web form so this is web form code we don't have any caching enabled on the web form and if you look at the user control again we don't have any caching enabled on the user control as well so obviously if we run this application as it stands let's save everything you know every time we request this web form change the product selection in the drop down list you know the web form is going to be reprocessed the web form and the user control everything will be reprocessed okay basically we have forgot to set um, the page server time so let's go ahead and set that to do that and the page load event I'm gonna set label one dot text is equal to date time dot now dot to string okay so let me run this now so when the web form first loads up in the drop-down list all will be selected and all products will be displayed and look at this look at pay attention to page server and client times and user control server and client times all of them are basically the same because everything is is being processed on the server okay so even if I change the selection for example I just want LCD TVs look at that all the times both on the page and on the user control they are the same now let's say uh, you know we want to cache multiple versions of this user control okay to do that obviously we have to enable caching on the user control so let's go to the user control and enable caching so to enable caching we can use the output cache directive So output cache directive, let's say I want to cache this web form for maybe 60 seconds. So I'm going to set 60 as the duration. And then I'm going to set vary by control is equal to drop down list one because we want to cache multiple responses, you know, based on varying value within this drop down list one control. I'm setting vary by control to drop down list one okay that's it we enabled caching for this user control and we we have enabled you know basically we are going to cache multiple versions of this user control okay uh, for each different selection in the drop down list we will have a, a separate response of that user control cached so with this change let me go ahead and run this so now notice the times you know the page and client server side times they're almost the same this one second difference here and one second difference here okay now at this time you know the user control time pay attention it is 1302.53 that's when the get request of this web form 1.aspx is cached now let me go to LCD TV and then let's go to the get request again look at that look at the user control server time it is still 1302.53 it's cached at that time and I'm going to receive this cached response anytime I, I issue a get request okay and if I change it to LCD TV look at that again for this selection this perform I mean this user control is basically cached at 130313 and that's what I get but look at the page server time and client time and the user control client time they keep changing all the time but not the user control server time you always receive you know a cached response in case if there is a response still if it has not expired okay so for each selection in this drop down list we are going to have a separate response cached for this user control so obviously to cache multiple responses for a user control we can use the vary by control attribute you might be wondering can't I use vary by params yes we can use vary by params usually in general whether to cache you know multiple responses for web forms or user controls we usually use vary by params when when we want to vary you know caching multiple responses based on differing query string values or posted form values in the next video we'll actually discuss about using vary by params to cache multiple versions of this user control all right another way to actually cache multiple versions of this user control instead I mean here if you look at this we're actually using the vary by control attribute of the output cache directive 
instead of that and we are doing that declaratively in the HTML now if we want to do it programmatically we can actually use the partial caching attribute so if you look at this slide here you know we have just seen how to cache multiple responses of the user control declaratively using the vary by control attribute of the output cache directive which is in the HTML on the other hand, we can also cache multiple responses of the user control programmatically using vary by controls property of the partial caching attribute. So on the user control class, I can use this partial caching attribute. So if you look at this at the moment, in the user control HTML, I have got rid of that output cache directive. I'm going to go into the class file of the user control. So this is the class of the user control. And then here, I can actually use partial caching attribute. So partial caching. And if you look at the constructor of this um, um, attribute, you know, you can specify the duration. And if you look at the other uh, overloaded version, you can specify named parameters as well. Okay, so basically I want to cache this for 60 seconds. So I'm going to set 60 as the duration and look at this named parameters. We can specify the name of the parameter and its value. That's what this named parameters mean. So I can specify vary by controls property, the parameter here. So vary by controls is equal to then whatever is the name of the control by which we want to vary that. In this case, we want to you know vary caching based on drop down list one control so I, I'm going to specify that as the value for vary by controls uh, parameter named parameter so this is one way another way is actually so that's one way let me comment that let me paste that here or let me open the attribute once again so partial caching attribute So partial caching and look at this this is the second overloaded constructor of that partial caching attribute uh, you know class but there is another constructor which basically takes all these parameters so duration uh, is 60 and look at the next parameter it's vary by params I am not going to vary anything by params so I'm going to pass null then you can specify vary by controls in this case the vary by controls is going to be drop down list one so that's what we pass and finally vary by custom I'm going to pass that as now so I can e either use this constructor of the partial caching attribute or I can use the constructor that takes named parameters I would say this is clean because you know what you are varying the response just by looking at the code here I am varying uh, or I am caching multiple responses based on vary by controls uh, parameter here it's not that clear you will literally have to open up this you know uh, parenthesis to see which overloaded version of the constructor that we are using to figure out uh, you know based on which we are caching multiple responses for this user control but you can either use this constructor or this constructor to cache multiple responses of that user control as I told in our next video we'll be discussing about when and how to use vary by params to cache multiple versions of the user control we'll also be talking about the differences between uh, caching multiple versions of the user control by using vary by params and vary by controls on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day